Thank you, Judge Loftus. Next, we will hear from Judge Eleanor Marsh Stormer, who graduated from Davidson College's Honors College and received her Juris Doctorate from the University of Akron School of Law. Judge Stormer has been a leader in bringing the concept of therapeutic jurisprudence to Ohio. In 1991, she was elected to the Akron Municipal Court, where she served for over 13 years. While at that court, she started the first municipal drug court and the first mental health specialty court in Ohio. In November 2004, she was elected to the Summit County Court of Common Pleas. In keeping with her commitment to intelligent sentencing and a smart on crime approach, in September 2006, she began Summit County's first reentry court to assist felons returning from prison to become law-abiding citizens. Judge Stormer was elected to the Summit County Probate Court in 2012, and in 2016 began the New Day Court, the first of its kind in Ohio, to help those under civil commitment avoid return to the hospital by providing a path to recovery for the severely mentally ill. New Day Court has quickly become a national model with visitors from across the state and country attending the court to learn best practices. Judge Stormer currently serves on the National Board of Directors of the Treatment Advocacy Center, a nonprofit organization dedicated to eliminating legal and other barriers to the effective treatment of severe mental illness. She has received numerous community awards, including the Heroes Award from the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Judge Stormer. Hello. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm very sorry for being late. We were in a driver training movie module on the way down here with cars and just very <laughs> odd. Uh, so I do apologize. Um, did you want to show the video? I'm not sure who I'm supposed to look at for the video. Oh, it's coming up. Ready for it? Yeah, I think we'll just show you this first. This is going to give you a little taste of what we do. I'm going to. Can you all see with my head here? Okay. <laughs> So that's actually a piece that we produce to take to families so that families who have loved ones in crisis could see that there's another option besides waiting to call a crisis intervention trained police officer to have your loved one arrested. They have the right to call the court. And Sean is still in recovery. She made all that jewelry she's wearing. Uh, she's become a jewelry designer and she's selling things on Etsy, should you like any of what you saw. So I got involved in 91 when I, shortly after I was elected, um, that was the cocaine crisis and alcohol crisis. So for some of you may remember when we were very worried about alcohol, we worry far less because we started to address the issue, came up with new ways of approaching the issue, treated as a public health problem, and now DUIs have dropped substantially. At the same time, as a new judge, I encountered a guy who was fighting the Korean War on Main Street in Akron, Ohio. He was found in the middle of the night. He was dodging in between cars. He was trying to hide. Um, he was clearly in distress, and he was arrested for disorderly conduct. So that was my first experience with someone who I went, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this man. He needs veteran services. He believes he's in the Korean War. Uh, he was taken to a hospital, and uh, then the charges were dismissed. Because the system we have, and some of you may know this, if you're mentally ill right now and you are pink slipped in the, in the hospital as a forensic mentally ill person, you're taken to the hospital, you're held there in a forensic unit at a very, very high cost. It's over $500 a day to keep someone in a forensic bed in a state hospital. And at the conclusion of restoration, if it's possible, um, you are returned to the system to be tried if you are restored. However, with misdemeanors, uh, the time that it takes to restore you is longer than the time you could be incarcerated, so the case is dismissed and you're just released to the street. So we started uh, a drug court in 95 to address cocaine. Uh, it was a misdemeanor drug court because there was no felony judge who would take it. And as Judge Loftus pointed out, he said, po no politician wants to take credit for bringing addicted people back into the community. Well, we do, obviously, but, <laughs> but at the time it was very, we couldn't get a judge to do it, so we did a felony reduction uh, into misdemeanor court. 
and we're dealing largely with cocaine. We did a terrible job, we got better at it. Uh, we, we, the programs we started, we found out didn't work very well. Uh, but in that, we discovered a subset of people who were seriously mentally ill. And I'm going to use that phrase, seriously mentally ill. When Judge Loftus tells you that 75% of the women in the criminal justice system are have a mental illness diagnosis, a significant portion are PTSD. And my court does not deal with PTSD. We deal with schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder, combinations thereof. Many of them also have a PTSD diagnosis, but if your primary diagnosis is PTSD, you are not part of this court. Uh, we also deal with severe depression, which usually means the people that I meet are people who have attempted suicide. Um, and have been hospitalized as a result of that. So we discovered a subset of our cocaine addicts were seriously mentally ill. And one thing I learned was that everybody wants to feel better than somebody, and if you were just a straight old junkie, you wanted to feel better than the junkie who was mentally ill. So we began to have a little bit of conflict in the court. Uh, so we decided to separate out the mental health uh, component, and in 2000 started a mental health court, a criminal court, and I'm gonna let you, you're gonna be talking about that, right? He said, isn't that nice? So accommodating. So, but, but what was the piece that was missing? And the piece that we felt was missing was really what we would call sequential intercept zero. That is, how do you get people into the mental health system before they've committed a crime and they have to be, you know, taken to jail? And at the time, we had in Summit County an assisted outpatient treatment uh, system where a person would be committed to the court through probate. They would be held in the mental institution. They would then be released to a community support service agency with case management services. But there was no teeth to it, shall we say. So the New Day Court is an attempt to add teeth. I cannot put people in jail. I can assure you that I miss that part of being able to force people to behave themselves. But it is nonetheless coercive. And we can show empirically how it works, that it has uh, been proven repeatedly to work, and we are currently under study right now by a, an outside entity to verify the efficacy of uh, the New Day court system. But I can tell you that our mental health court has been repeatedly validated. So there's a lot of pushback sometimes from the community saying, we don't believe in coercive treatment, people have to reach their own conclusions. Our court is designed, like all specialty courts, to foster uh, personal responsibility for your illness. I make the analogy, if you had diabetes, you would take insulin, you have a brain glitch, let's talk about the brain glitch and how you're going to treat your brain glitch. <coughs> I accept people as they are. If they come in and tell me they're paraclete of Kaborga, then they're the paraclete of Kaborga. I'm not gonna talk about that. All I talk about is hospitalization. How do you avoid being hospitalized? So they're very interesting conversations. Sean uh, wouldn't actually talk to me. She would only hand me letters um, for a long time and that I accept that. I've had people come up and say, today is a no talk day. Okay, I'm gonna to talk to you about staying out of the hospital. So far, we've had hundreds of people come through the court and 12 have bounced back. So out of the multi-hundreds who have come through, 12 have been re-hospitalized after leaving the program and have come back to the court. Of those, the most striking thing is, and we know this from all the therapeutic courts, just exposure to the therapeutic court can make a difference in the long-term outcome and recovery of a person. But when they bounce back, they're much more willing to talk about the fact that they have a mental illness. And there is a word which many of you can say, and I can't. It's something like agnosonomia. Can anybody help me with that? It's something like that. It means that the part of the mental illness is that you don't recognize that you have an illness. So I understand that that is a part of the presentation of many of our people, including our high utilizers. Uh, and those are people who were in the hospital three, four, seven times in the year before I met them, before we started this court. Um, and we just accept the fact that they don't believe they're mentally ill. And we say, take the medicine anyway and see what happens. And the good news is, after a period of stabilization, a lot of people are able to say, you know, I now understand, you know, that I have schizophrenia and it's, you know, like hypertension. I have to take a pill every day and then I don't have it. Uh, it's um, a very interesting program. It's all recovery centered. It's supportive in a case management way. Um, and it is what we hope will become sequential intercept zero that now, as time goes forward, we will not have people who are mentally ill taken to the jail because they've committed a crime because they're mentally ill. Why do I feel so strongly about this? Why do I feel passionately enough to drive down here in your messy traffic? <laughs> because I am an elected official, and uh, you know I tell people there's two words, Aurora, Colorado, Sandy Hook, Parkland, Florida. 
I never want that to happen in my community. I want to be able to say I did everything I could to keep that from happening, and that's my commitment to my community. And we invite any of you who are interested to come and visit us. Thank you.